finally found out that my girlfriend of 10 plus years and fiance of 4 years has been cheating on me for the last 3 years. After deciding to put all of our money into purchasing a house. A 30 year old man, 5 years my younger, shouted at me as he walked out of my driveway yesterday morning. I feel a bit better about myself as I walk out the door with my fiance and this guy, who claims to be surprised that the person he's been seeing for 3 years now has a home, a dog, and an engaged boyfriend, who both say they are. He came in after finishing his speech segment and proceeded inside the room while I was outside with the two of them, which I found odd. For the last 10 years, my partner and I have been together. While I was away at graduate school, our relationship went through many ups and downs, and as a result of our experiences, we were able to be married and have a family. I returned to find that my mother's house had undergone a significant transformation by that time. The lack of connection and intimacy between the two of us was just a rerun of our past encounters with the same person. They did, however, agree to collaborate on the project as part of a team-oriented approach. Things began to look better, and we came to the conclusion that we would not be having a wedding. After we had saved up enough money and received any more funds from our family, our dream was to be able to purchase our own home. Her connection with this other man comes to light after a year of living at home and years of arguing with me over my choice to allow her to be independent and go out with her friends on Friday and Saturday evenings instead of with her boyfriend. In the course of a lengthy amount of time when I think about how connected our lives have become, and the fact that we own this beautiful home in both of our names, I'm completely at a loss for what to do. It is also a terrific canine friend, apart from that. I'm heartened by the fact that she hasn't contested anything and seems to have told me the complete truth about this particular individual. A hole in her life had been filled by this man, and I was unable to do the same. Having committed the crime, her motivations were twofold, she wanted to be loved again, and she also desired to seem younger. It's possible that our position was too much for her to handle, and she hoped she could pretend she was back at college or something similar to alleviate the stress. To be really honest, I don't believe that is fair. However, despite her words that she would want for us to work, I can't seem to get the picture of her in this lie from my mind for some reason. Everything about our life, our family, and our home is something I enjoy. But, despite this, I'm not sure I'll ever be able to love her again in the same way that I did before. Please make yourself available to me at all times. I appreciate it. Update, recent events caused me to make the choice to spend the weekend apart from my family and friends. As a result of my confiding in a few close friends, I received some wonderful advice, but they ultimately advised me against making any hasty judgments in either way. Even while you should feel these feelings, you should not allow them to dictate your life or to anticipate negative reactions from others. No matter how aggressive my partner has been towards me, I harbor no ill will toward her and have no desire for her death. Although it may be an indicator that I am losing interest in her, I do not want her to perish by the side of the road in the middle of nowhere, and I am not willing to let that happen. The only thing I ask is that people be honest with themselves, and I ask that everyone else be honest with themselves as well. My first and most essential aim is to be able to make an honest choice for myself in the manner in which I deserve, with the confidence I deserve. There has been a great deal of argument and disagreement concerning her motivation for doing what she did during the previous few days, and this has continued into today. It's totally irrational in every way conceivable. It did, however, draw attention to the fact that something wasn't quite right in our relationship. These are different therapists than I've been seeing in the past, I'm seeing an independent therapist on my own this week as well as a couple therapists with her, which is something new for me. Earlier in the week, though, I took the day off and told my boss that I would be spending it at the beach rather than in the office. After discussing our sentiments with one other, I suggested that we spend some time apart to process them and restore our composure. Despite the fact that she has expressed sorrow in the aftermath of the things I've done to her over the years, I believe she needs to take a long, hard look in the mirror in order to realize what she's done to herself. I have also seen that, despite the fact that her actions have totally flipped my life upside down. She is much more protective of her activities and concerned about losing her home to me and being labeled as the cheating spouse than I am. What you've just said is quite important. I'm entrusting her with all of my typical tasks this week as a result of her new diagnosis, even things she doesn't understand about my household duties. Thank you for your understanding, but I'm not going to grab your pitchforks and demand that I dump her in front of everyone while making a great show of myself, as you have demanded. To be quite honest, that's simply not my style. It is preferable to make a well-informed choice and then be content with it rather than the reverse. I will be able to mature as a person as a result of her heinous behavior which drove me to leave her in the way in which I chose to do so. If she bumps into the person she was with earlier in the day, she'll be even more dissatisfied with her life. Nevertheless, I am still bewildered and befuddled by the whole situation, 
I am still mystified by the whole thing. Update 2, a great deal has transpired in the previous month or two, and the therapy has shown to be really effective thus far. Together, my ex fiance and I came to the conclusion that she should move into a new apartment and that we should terminate our engagement. As a result of our connection, we've allegedly been visiting separate therapists and have chosen to refrain from communicating for at least a month. That time window has been set out for me to work with him. Having regular contact with her and reliving previous events and disputes with her does not help and really makes me feel worse, therefore I've decided to avoid doing so until things seems more normal. If I ever have the opportunity. This month, after my prior article, has sent me into the deepest pit of depression I've ever experienced. However, I believe that it has the potential to be advantageous. I've grown more aware of my own identity and what I want and need in life, as well as in a romantic partner. This has occurred outside of exercising and going on dates. You are more likely to regard infidelity as normal in a long-term relationship when you come from a family where it has occurred in the past. As a result, I have been experiencing some challenges. No, I'm not familiar with the concept of a normal relationship or what it implies. So talking to people who have no prior experience with anything like this and who have no understanding of our situation has been beneficial because it has allowed me to realize how twisted our lives were and how messed up what she did as a result of her actions was has allowed me to realize how twisted our lives were. I also recently got in touch with a gentleman, who, like myself, seemed to be completely uninformed of the scenario at hand. He has not yet responded to my email. I spoke with her on the phone because I wanted clarity on a couple of topics, as well as confirmation that she had seen him since the invasion of Normandy. My ex has made many attempts to renew our relationship, but I have no intention of doing so myself. I want to buy her out of our house over the following few months and gradually relocate her somewhere else with me. After I've signed the papers and moved on with my life, I'll most likely provide one last update on this. However, I would want to express my gratitude to everyone who has shown their support for me on this website or in private correspondence. There's no way to completely prepare for or comprehend it unless you've gone through it yourself, and I'm currently going through it as I write this article. I get frequent nightmares and feel weary and melancholy at certain points during the day. Yet it is possible to feel upbeat, if not delighted, about the future, and I am seeing glimpses of this right now, which is encouraging. I'd want to encourage anybody else who finds themselves in a similar circumstance to do all they can to get out of it as quickly as possible. Maintain a safe distance from the individual who had the affair since they are toxic and will bring you nothing but misery. Keep in mind, though, that you are not the one who is experiencing discomfort. Take the initiative and make a commitment to yourself to do things like go out with friends or take a trip to keep your mind busy. Breaking Open, written by Elizabeth Lesser and recommended to me by my therapist, was a book that I found to be really beneficial to me throughout my recuperation.